Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, I know it's a little noisy. We're doing an experiment. Yes, we're doing a boil off experiment. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the sharing. I've been reading other companies who've been selling steam condensers. This one's the one that's brand new from Anvil for the Anvil Foundry system. I believe it works in other systems too. It's got some improvements over other designs I've seen out there, which I like a lot. But here's what I've been hearing from the other companies is that not only do you reduce your power when you're boiling, which yeah, I gotta get these lids off here pretty quick, but you have a lower boil off. Some is by as much as 50% lower boil off. So if that's true, we need to take that into adjustment when we're adding our water for our mash and our boil off and everything like that. So what I've done is I filled both of them with exactly six gallons distilled water. We're gonna boil them both at 212 Fahrenheit 240 degree or 240 volts and we're going to let that go for exactly 60 minutes one solid hour then i will shut them off i was going to try to chill them both down but i think it's going to be very difficult to chill them both equally and as quickly so instead of adding that to it i'm just going to remove the lids let them naturally cool down we're going to measure and we're going to see what the difference was boil off if we had a bigger boil off over here without the steam condenser and a lower boil off it makes sense because it's got a little bit of pressure but I don't know, and you know me, I don't always take people's word. I am kind of a, my mom was from Missouri, you gotta show me, I gotta see it. So yeah, hopefully we'll see if there's a significant difference, minor difference, or no, for, no difference at all, which I would actually be shocked. So like I said, we're getting ready to get to a boil, I gotta get these lids off, and let's see how it goes. And don't forget, be safe. Okay, we're at 207 degrees and we already have a nice rolling boil. So I'm going to go right ahead. I'm going to put the steam condenser on here. I'm going to start the timer and we're going to let it go. Got to find my timer. And there we go. We got the timer going. Stick it over here. So we got one hour. It's crazy that they're boiling with nothing in them at 207, 208. Yeah, it is what it is. Time to get the steam condenser on. I like hitting this edge. And remember, no clamps. I've got a little pot over here I'm gonna put into. And I put a quick disconnect on the end. So we'll get that going. Open her up. Okay, I think that's probably a little heavy because that's another thing, you can use less power. We've got a good boil going. Okay, you may ask, you may ask why, yeah, I got water all over my face. Why I kicked it down to 65% and not 50% or why I kicked it down at all. I've seen people saying that with a steam condenser, they can run their 100% or should we say their 212 boil at 50% and I've seen as high as 75. 65 seems to be what I hear most. So we're going for 65 and we're gonna see if the boil's maintained. I know you're thinking, well, why, did, why wouldn't you run 100% on both if you're doing this comparison? because in the real world, if that's what you're doing, you're probably gonna be low on your power over here and I want it to be as accurate as possible. I'm seeing some more water leaking. Maybe I didn't snap that on tight enough. It felt pretty tight. Okay. Okay, I got a little tighter, not much, but definitely a little tighter. So that goes. Let's see if we're still boiling. Okay, it's not a rolling boil, so I'm kicking it up. It's boiling, but it's not a rolling boil. Probably should have dialed this in before we did the comparison, but that's okay. We'll get there. We'll let it get back up. It says it's 212 still, but. Okay, that's it. It's been exactly 60 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the power off on both of them. I hadn't planned on this part. Well, I did, but. Okay, and I still got water coming through here because I forgot to turn the hose off, but that's okay. Okay, I could be wrong. I'm not looking at the gauge, the indicators, but it does look like I have a little more water over here. So let's come around the front side. Okay, so we're sitting right at about 5.5, just a hair under. This is with the steam condenser. Without the steam condenser, yeah, we're at almost five gallons. I know the steam is hazing that up on you, but yeah, right at about five gallons. Wow, that was a difference, huge difference. I know it's about about a gallon per hour at 240 volts, which that looks like it's dead on for six gallons down at five. Over here, we're about half, 50%, which was what I did read on, 
I can't, I won't even say the name of the company, but one of the companies out there mentioned 50% reduction in boil off. We're sitting pretty close to 5.5. I'm gonna try to measure this out and figure out exactly, like I said, what we are to the ounce, but that's something to be very aware of if you're using a condenser. Yeah, not a bad thing, it's just an awareness thing. Now, I did have a few problems with the boil off condenser, which I believe are very easily fixed. Okay, my two issues, which like I said, easily fixable. One, I had a little bit of leak right here at the dual type, type, type connection, and it's because I had tension on the hose. When I relieved that tension, I didn't see the drips. And it was a very, very, very slow build to a drip. So it wasn't a big deal. Like I said, once I relieved the tension on this, problem fixed. Other problem I had with the pressure, and I was trying to avoid putting too much pressure under it, is between this piece and the metal threads, I was getting a nice, nice consistent leak. I believe a little Teflon will fix that. I don't see a reason why not. This piece cools down very, very quickly and never gets too hot. Yeah, don't touch that even for a while. It's still nice and warm. Only other issue, I did get this submerged just for maybe about 30 seconds, close to a minute, and I took care of that right away. I just looked away for a moment. I have to verify how many gallons I went through. I did put a quick disconnect on here just because it makes life really, really easy. But yeah, and if you've seen some of the other steam condensers, I have an issue. One, not a big issue, where they have another tri-clamp here with a, another piece, that adds more weight. I'm not sure if that's a huge deal, but one piece here does seem like an improvement. Number two, some of them go straight up as a T connector, which I would think a lot of that steam would come in and just recondense and you know may or may not ever really go out, which is a bit of a concern. That's why I like the way Anvil did it. I have a feeling that they learned from testing other companies and seeing how other companies were doing it and said, well, how can we improve upon it? And they made a couple improvements. But like I said, I think a little bit of Teflon would fix that problem right there. I couldn't tell if I had a leak here. It doesn't make any sense if the water's going down. This wasn't a, the hose was never full. I think it was just the water dripping down here, hitting that, making it look like it was leaking. But the clamp, I have it on full. I had to tighten it all the way down to get it to clamp because the hose is a little bit big for the actual tube on the bottom here, but it does fit and the clamp's nice and snug. I, yeah, like I said, I think it was the water dripping, but it's something I noticed and was a little concerned initially. Let me move this out of the way. Wow, that was an eye opener. Okay, so <laughs> this was just one test, 60 minutes, two anvils, side by side, one of the steam condenser, one wide open. This one is 75%. I did that because I've seen people recommending as low as 50%, but at 75%, I had a really good roll, just not as intense as it was over here open at 100%, but it was nice. Anything below that, I just wasn't getting, wasn't getting happy and excited, you know what I mean? So. I'm gonna include ounces, liters, gallons, everything, so I'm not excluding anyone and I don't have to put up a bunch of text either, although I probably will just to make it a little easier for you to scribble things down if you need to. So, we started in both of them, we're six gallons or 22.7 liters, or if you're gonna do some calculations, you're probably gonna to wanna to put this in ounces or milliliters. It'll make it easier to break things down, but total ounces was 768 ounces. That helped me do a little bit more equivalent math for me. When we were done, we had five gallons, 16 ounces, or 19.4 liters remaining, which means we had 85.14% of the liquid still in the kettle, and we had boiled off 14.5%. That gives us 1.8666, not to infinity, but out there pretty far, so about 1.86, we can say 1.87 ounces, Per minute. If you're gonna calculate it 60, 90 minutes, I probably would go 1.866 just to get a more accurate reading, or 55.18 milliliters per minute. So that was our boil off rate, 1.866 or per ounce, or 55.18 milliliters per minute. So our total boil off was 112 ounces or 300, no, 3,312 milliliters boil off. Over here, that means without the steam condenser, I went from six gallons, 22.7 liters, to four gallons, 92 ounces, or 17.86 liters, 604 ounces. 
leaving us with 78.65% of our water still remaining and a boil off rate or a boil off percentage of water at 21.35, which means that we boiled off approximately 2.7333, not to infinity, but out there. So 2.733 ounces per minute or 80.82 per minute. So when you're doing your calculations, if you're looking at Anvil, they're going to assume that you're probably in that neighborhood. Keep in mind, this was only one test and your mileage may vary, but if you're using an Anvil foundry, I'm going to assume that it's probably not gonna vary very much. <laughs> very, 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 yeah, very, very much. But so 1.866 ounce per minute, 2.733 ounce per minute, you can, you know, take 1.86 from that, calculate it out, and it'll, it'll give you about where you need to be for what you need to deduct as far as water. So if you're doing that, and I'm doing my brew today, I've got 90 minutes, I'm going to deduct 78 ounces from my total water. If I were doing a 60 minute boil, I would deduct 52 ounces based on those calculations. So again, steam condenser and I put Teflon up there or Teflon up on here anyways. I've decided it, it just needs to be there. That leak was just driving me nuts. I just couldn't get a good seal there between the plastic and the stainless. So putting the Teflon should solve that problem. But 1.86, 1.866 ounce per minute, 55.18 milliliters per minute. Loss over here, 2.733 ounce per minute at 100% or 80.82 milliliters per minute. So you can kind of look at that and go, okay, okay. Now I have some math and I can figure it out. If you need help, throw it in the comments, tell me what you're doing, I'll figure it out. I love math, so it's not a big deal. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate it. I hope this information helps you. If you have a steam condenser, I would assume any other type of steam condenser might be similar. I don't know about the one that goes up like a T because I'm thinking a lot of water is dripping back, so you probably have an even lower boil off in my eyes, but your mileage may vary. Thank you again and cheers.